Gracie and I are at the coal mines today and we're going to um, have a look at the Hurst shafts as I call them. This is the uh, main track as you come into the coal mines and when you come in you'll see on your left over there large mounds and to your right here very close to the track is a shaft. Now this one here they believe was an exploratory shaft which means they didn't find coal in it. Um, we'll leave that one alone but I just thought I'd point it out to you. Now these shafts here on this area I'm going to talk about to today um, were all dug after the convicts left. And researchers say that they were dug by James Hurst. I've talked about him quite a lot in my videos. He was a former convict um, who became an overseer in charge of mining here when the convicts were here and then later on he um, leased the mines from the government over different periods of time. So these mines here we believe were dug, oh sorry these shafts we believe were dug around 1860 to 1870 before he finished here. And you just see this large mound here, this is the spoil from the mine this might, might, make, might make more sense today instead of things being covered in bracken which you can see here in front of me where the two shafts are and then the spoil was brought out from the shafts um, maybe in trolleys on a little track system and dumped and dumped until they got to the edge there and you see there's no coal down this end but as they hit the coal um, you can see fragments of coal um, starting to peer closer to the shaft. So we'll pop up here and have a look at these two shafts. We're at the edge of these uh, two shafts. These are located just behind the solitary cells that were located um, below and behind the separate apartments. So you can see here that they've um, dug this shaft right up, right up against the wall that used to surround the uh, solitary cells. Now it's unusual but not completely unusual up here to have two shafts this close together. Uh, researchers say these were both production shafts. Uh, sometimes they'd have one uh, production shaft and the other would be an air shaft to feed air down into the tunnels below. Now if we have a look on the other side here, and you can see sandstone blocks, which I gather have been removed from the um, ruins beside us here, and then they travel over, possibly to that corner over there and this is where they would have had the engine mounted um, a steam engine mounted to um, remove the coal from the shaft to lower the men up and down and to remove water uh, water was a big issue on the shafts down here so once the coal was removed they needed to get it to a jetty and then onto a boat and by the time they started these shafts here, the long jetty, which is down near the surgeon's quarters, um, I believe was no longer in existence. So they had to get the coal from here all the way down to Plunkett Point. You can see here my beloved string. This would be the direction the um, tramway would have taken, about a metre wide, and it travels up through the um, main settlement area itself. So that's another reason why we know that the convicts weren't building these shafts um, because they were residing in this area here. Now, it travels up here and you can see these depressions quite clearly when you're here. And where Gracie is here, we come down to another shaft 
and the tramway for this one here went up the rise there where my rope is now this shaft here on my left just to confuse things a little um, was believed to be an air shaft so they'd have a um, small little furnace down there with coal burning and then the hot air would rise and as it rose it would suck the air out of the um, tunnels below which would mean that the um, fresh air would feed down the other working shaft now that working shaft is tucked away up in here and that's right there in front of me and you want to treat these as not as depressions in the ground but as sinkholes uh, there's no record of when they were actually uh, filled, how well they were filled and some of them seem to be getting a little bit deeper year by year so I'll head back out here and we'll pop up to where our two little tramways meet and I expect only would have been run at one time they would have put this one here when they finished what one there see the string on the right and the depression on the left is where this one came up and then looking back that way you can see the um, tramway where it came from the first uh, sorry the second uh, double shaft that we looked at so they traveled right through here at the back of the prisoners barracks They would have just missed the corner here because they've left the sandstone alone here and you can see across here the reinforcing they've done on both sides and looks like they've used some brick underneath to give it some stability and then it travels right through here We've got our cookhouse and bakehouse on the left and what I call the assistant superintendent college on the right so they didn't have to touch either of those buildings they just came straight through on a path um, that led through here and they travelled to where Gracie is now and continued through to Prunkett Point um, we're not going to walk all the way through the bush there um, we'll meet um, at the other end and just show you how it terminated. This is the track that comes down from the main settlement to Plunkett Point. Um, once upon a time, this was an actual road, not a convict road, but a road built so vehicles could access Plunkett Point um, and have barbecues, picnics or whatever. Uh, those roads are closed off now, but on the right hand side of the track as you're going down, you see the sandstone um, blocks and they um, have been put there to um, support the sides of the tramway that commenced right back there with the um, hearse shafts so you can see here coal and the coal as the rabbits have dug up there continues along large patches of so that was the coal that was falling off the carts as they were bringing it down to Plunkett Point. And as the tramway continues along there you can see the um, sandstone disappears a little bit here under all this deadfall so we pick it up again side here you can just see there uh, where that sandstone is but there's a little foundation of it going along here and seems to be more reinforcement over in that area it tends to protrude out a bit I'm not too sure what this um, section is here uh, maybe they at a different time came down to this cleared area here um, for some reason and there's 
little fragments of it left along here and coming into the Plunkett Point um, area now and travels along here you can just see the rise and then I've got some there on both sides there's a couple of pieces left over there um, I'm not sure what happened but from here there's a couple of large blocks so the tramway would have continued forward down to the Plunkett Point jetty and when that was destroyed um, they would have travelled down to here and used the jetty in front of the commissariat store so next time you're down at Plunkett Point or travelling down to Plunkett Point um, have a look for these um, foundations of the tramway on your right and it'll make a little bit more sense to you. Now, the reason why these shafts were built so close to the ruins um, after the convicts left is the seam had already been followed as far as they could go north and west. They couldn't go east because of the water so they decided to see if there was any coal left south. So there's a couple of um, smaller ones a little bit further south from this which they didn't seem to find any coal at but um, they obviously got what was left on the um, south edge of the scene from here. So there we have it, the hearth shafts at the coal mines. <laughs>